Family Practice Mysteries. Coming home. Yeah. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm a former Hallmark hater. Today we're discussing Family Practice Mysteries Coming Home, which originally aired on Hallmark Mystery on May 17th, 2024, but was available to stream on Hallmark Movies now ahead of its release. For Hang like, on. oh, I'm sorry. I was like, it's been available for like... A long time. <laughs> a long time. They're dropping some of these mysteries way early. What do you think? Don't know if you have ideas about why they're doing that. Email us. Yes. Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. Did did I tell you we have a new um, email address? No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I had to create a new one because our new newsletter account, which you can sign up for at girlsconehallmark.com, required a separate email address. Got it. So we now have girlsconehallmark at gmail.com. Hey. Okay. We'll send your... Hallmark related emails there, girls gone hallmark at gmail.com. When he doesn't have the login, she'll never check I it. I asked her if she had the password for our current email, <laughs> and I almost wanted to change it. And I was like, if I change it, she'll never ever log in ever again. Yeah, did you ever figure it out? Because thought- I was able to get in, but I don't know what the password I don't is. Know what okay, mind. don't hack us. <laughs> <laughs> Hang out with us when the podcast is over. You can follow us on Instagram. We are Girls Gone Hallmark and Megan and Wendy. Come on over and jump into our Girls Gone Hallmark Facebook group. We've been talking a lot about movies we didn't review over there. Ooh. I have two bits of Hallmark news. Let me hear it. The first is about a new movie series, mystery series. Do you know this news? Is this the Andrew Walker something to do with bees? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. You need to start tap, tap, tapping away to clarify (laughs) that information. No, this is about Sarah Drew, who will be headlining a new Hallmark mystery series, The Mistletoe Murders. This is based on a audible global hit podcast by the same name. What is it, the name again? Mistletoe Murder. I kind of love a holiday-themed murder mystery. Yeah, so production is going to begin in June in Toronto, and I don't see a release date. Obviously, it would lend itself to being a holiday release, but if we're going to have a series, does that mean they're going to wait to drop them during the holiday season every year? Wendy's got B news. So (laughs) I just want to say that I am a big fan of Sarah Drew. Um, I like the idea that we're getting, like, there's a lot of book to movie, but I like the narrative podcast to movie pipeline as well. Yeah, for sure. I'm in. Tell me about Andrew Walker, B-Man. Why don't we know anything about this? It says all new. It's on Hallmark Channel. It's called For Love and Honey, premieres Saturday, June 1st, starring Andrew Walker and Margaret Clooney. Um... That's because the June movies are not on our radar because we're not reviewing them. Yeah, but have they even, like, made a big announcement about June movies? June is typically wedding stuff. There's no June weddings this year. Yeah. I knew that. This year is going to be called Passport to Love. Okay, well, this takes place in Malta. Anyway, it's beekeeper Ava uncovers an ancient fresco while recovering a hive. Austin, a visiting archaeologist, thinks it is key to his research, so he persuades Ava to help him on his quest across Malta. Like, guys, I enjoy Andrew Walker movies, but kind of glad we're skipping this one. Okay, so all of June, it is called Passport to Love rather than June Weddings, which is good. I don't need that many wedding movies. Yeah. Obviously, For Love and Honey is in Malta. Savoring Paris is in Paris. Fake Paris, though, filmed in Bulgaria featuring Bethany Joy Lenz. Then we get a Greek recipe for romance. Who's in that one? Daniel C. Ryan and Raphael Cariotakis. Okay. And Two Scoops of Italy is starring Hunter King and Michelle Rossiello. 
I might be into that second one with Bethany Joy Lens in yeah. Perry. Uh, Fake Perry. Faux Perry. Okay, what other news and notes do you have? Well, Hallmark sent shockwaves through its fandom when it announced its new immersive holiday experience to be taking place at their headquarters, Crown Center in Kansas City, Missouri. They wanted in, there's a lot of Hallmark cons. We got Christmas con, we got Roma drama, which has been teasing a new event, but they haven't dropped For an October. actual date. People are assuming it's October because there's like a little pumpkin in the... I thought I read something like it said, like, get your Halloween costumes ready or something like that. What it says is something fun is coming. There's ghosts and pumpkins on the image. And the caption is, start planning your costumes. Details coming soon. So everyone is assuming, of course, a Halloween-themed event. But Mm -hmm. we don't have any information. All of this to say, Hallmark wanted a piece of that pie. And so get it. They have designed the Hallmark Christmas Experience, which as a whole, is free to the public. Right. With a giant old asterisk. Yeah. It runs from November 29th through December 23rd. There's a Christmas market, event-exclusive Hallmark products, gifts by Hallmark artisans, festive food-themed drinks, ice skating. I mean, it's like walking into your own Hallmark movie. Nightly tree lightings. Then there is an upsale piece. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you have the pricing in front of you by any chance? I sure do. The Be Merry package is $259. And that's the cheap one. The Find Magic package is $699. And may I also add, it is sold out the weekend we have Tyler Hines. Oh, shocker. Yeah. But Find Magic $699 sold out. Tell me what those paid packages, a couple things that include. Okay. You can partake in a look behind the lens with some of your favorite Hallmark stars. It's where they talk about their, I think, believe it's a panel where they're going to talk about like their experiences on certain movies. Yeah. There's also reindeer games with Hallmark stars where you will watch the Hallmark stars participate in minute to win it games. Minute to win (laughs) it games, basically. This does not include any photo ops, no photo ops with any Hallmark stars under the $299 $299 oh my goodness. package <clears throat> per person. Per person. When you upgrade to the $699 package, this is when you get the photo ops. You get access to Home Sweet Hallmark Movie Thon, which I think is like movies running all day long. You can like pop in and watch. I don't know why you have to pay so much money. You can do that at home. Um, yeah, don't spend your time doing that. Yeah, you get access to a pop up bar and. It's the photo ops. You're paying for the photo ops. ops. And I just, that's a lot of money. It is. It is a lot of money. I don't know if you have heard the chatter on one of our favorite radio shows, but like these cons, I don't know Hallmark specifically, but some of the celebrities that are on this show are talking about walking away with like thirty to a hundred thousand dollars in a weekend doing these cons. Wow. And they're like you would be stupid it's a to no leave brainer. that money on that table. Yeah, of course. As cool as it sounds, as much as I would love to go, it's like two weeks after we go on our cruise, we yeah. will not be turning back around. Well, I don't know about you. I will not be turning back around and flying across the country again. This is what I wonder too. You know, I have seen in the cruise Facebook groups, like people are w- anxiously waiting for an announcement of which Hallmark stars are going yeah, to be. I got that. Let me hear them. Well, okay. First of all, of course it's a no-brainer they're going to do one weekend in Kansas City because they're going to make a lot of money, right? Yeah. But th- to go on a cruise, they got to be in that cruise for four days. Yes. So that's five days. Yeah. Sixth Man, who's the company who runs the cruise, has said like celebrity announcements like will be made. They have, like I don't know, four to six weeks out. They've They've said like, it's coming, but we're not going to tell you. And everyone's like, I don't understand why we could get the announcement for Kansas City, but we can't get them for the cruise. Well, y- y'all, you're on a boat. You can't fly in and out. Mm-hmm. Like, Tyler could fly in on a Friday night and fly out on a Sunday afternoon and do the whole weekend. You can't do that for a cruise. Mm-hmm. Five days is a huge time commitment to be away. And I would imagine someone that don't know their filming schedules for November and mm-hmm. can't commit. And so... They got to wait until it's a lot closer. It's logistically a bigger challenge. 
Six Man produced this, like, Hallmark is a partner. They're not just willy-nilly inviting people who happen to be on Hallmark. This is in conjunction with Hallmark. Mm -hmm. Hallmark wants this to be a success. Sure. But they also got a lot of movies to film, so we have to just wait and see. I hope hope for our sake we get at least one person we're excited to see. We will. We're going to get a ton of people we're excited to see. I have no doubt. Yeah. I... I feel like Walker and Palaha are going to be cruise directing the S word out of this cruise. You think so? I do. Even though they did their own cruise thing. Show me the money. Yeah, true. True, true. (laughs) Shout out to everybody who can fork out $700. Plus travel. Plus travel. Like all right before Christmas. It's just... Yeah, so if you're going, let us know. We want all of the details. Yeah, we want all the details. We're excited for you. We'll spill the cruise details. You spill the Christmas experience details. Exactly. Hey, let's hear a synopsis for Family Practice Mysteries. A former army surgeon moves back to her hometown and joins a practice of family doctors. But when she's drawn into solving the mysterious death of a patient, her quiet life becomes upended. This was directed by Michael Robison, who has 83 directing credits. Michael's Hallmark movie resume includes It Had to Be You, A Picture of Her, and An Unexpected Christmas. Barry M. Skolnick wrote Family Practice Mysteries Coming Home. Barry has 24 total writing credits, including Law & Order, Law & Order UK, Profile, Filer, Matlock, L.A. Law, and The Good Wife. BTW, The Good Wife is such a good series if you have not watched it. I never did. Josh Charles, mm, Chef's Kiss, so good. Ooh, he bit. is someone who I would love to see on a Hallmark movie, to be quite uh, honest. Oh. Okay, sorry. Amanda Schull plays Dr. Rachel Hunt. It's impossible to talk about Amanda without remembering her standout role on Center Stage, which was her very first acting role, according to IMDb. Since then, she has appeared in One Tree Hill, 12 Monkeys, Suits, and 911 Lone Star. You know, um, Center Stage is a movie I will always stop and watch if I come across it. Mm. I love that movie so much. I love it. The final dance scene is incredible. I'm sorry. I totally love it. implausible, but amazing. I loved it. Brendan, I saw it in the movie theater. Wow. I'm an old lady. Brendan Penny plays Detective Jack Quinn. Brendan has 58 acting credits, which most recently include A Season for Family, The Wedding Cottage, In Merry Measure, and Chesapeake Shores. Ian Collins plays Avery Smith. Ian has 39 acting credits, which include the sci-fi series Snowpiercer, as well as Good Morning Christmas on the 12th date of Christmas, and The Chronicle Mysteries for Hallmark. Kendall Cross plays Meredith Alexander. Kendall has 104 acting credits, including an episode of Once Upon a Time, as well as Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, a show I would like to add to our Hallmark actor resume bingo card. I agree. I've seen it. I clock it all the time and I don't usually write it down because it's not like, I feel like we needed to like introduce it, Mm -hmm. but it's yes. She was also in Curious Caterer, Dying for Chocolate, My Christmas Family Tree, and Sweet Revenge, a Hannah Swinson mystery. (laughs) Benjamin Wilkinson plays William Flexner. Benjamin hits the bingo trifecta with roles in Unreal, Once Upon a Time, and The Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce among his 106 acting credits. On Hallmark, we've seen him in Fourth Down in Love, Rip in Time, and Christmas in Tahoe, to name a few from a very long list. Let's take a quick break and come right back with First Impressions. Thank you to Lux Ice for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Lux Ice isn't just about amazing ice. They're passionate about giving back. Through their Ice for Good program, they invest in their community and team members, providing opportunities for growth and professional development. So when you choose Lux Ice, you're not just treating yourself to an upgraded drink experience using their crystal clear craft ice. You're supporting a company that cares. Find out more about our new favorite good ice as well as where to find it in store at LuxIceUSA.com or on Instagram at LuxIceUSA. Let's talk first impressions. Look, I can barely get 10 minutes with my doctor, and it must be because she's out solving crimes. (laughs) My first impression is, does HIPAA expire when the patient does? 
seriously. <laughs> seriously. I have uh, I had to watch this movie twice. I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> I'm just gonna straight out say I didn't love it, but then like as I let it marinate a little bit, I was like, there are some things. The bones are there. They are there. Yes. I could see a potential future series. Yes. But for this, this movie was kind of a mess. Oh, God. I got thoughts. I got thoughts. But let's talk what we liked. Okay. Um, I like Amanda Scholl and Brendan Penny together. I did not love this movie, as we will discuss. But I do feel like there's potential. I like the pieces. I liked Rachel's dad. I liked the dad, too. Um, I like Avery, the investigative reporter. And I also enjoy the possible ongoing storylines about veterans and life at home. Okay. That is a really good point. I agree. I appreciated that we have a female military vet. Mm-hmm. Coming back into civilian life. Mm-hmm. Though I'm a little bit... Uh, I'm a little confused on the timeline here because has she been home? Oh, when did her husband die? Did she just move home with her dad? Was that clear? It seems like they're newly home. She just gets this job? Like she just, she's got these patients? Like she's invested in this patient and his like death? Mm. She just met. That's a good question. See how I was a little confused? Yeah. Because if I think about the teenage kids, yes, they seemed very, very new mm-hmm. into their like mm-hmm. environment, right? But then, like her, I'm just. How do you? Not that. Like, how do you care so much about that patient already? But like, it came to me like she had this like relationship with this patient. Mm-hmm. So like, what? Well, what's the time frame here? Yeah. It, well, that's a good point. I really do like the. I, we need more stories of veterans coming, being integrated back into life. Yeah, I. Th- I'm gonna be on. Uh, Okay, I'm going to save the honesty. I do like how her dad talks a lot about vets need help adjusting, normalizing the mental health. I'm going to save the butt for a minute. Okay. I'm going to talk about Amanda and Brendan in my wished for. Okay. Hear me out here. I said earlier, I th- I think there could be a future here. Yeah. With this series. However, this is what I worry about. We have Curious Caterer, right? Mm. Where... Goldie works as a caterer, and every job she gets involved in, there's some sort of mishap. Mm. Now, is are we going to follow this same sort of format where we have Dr. Rachel? Is she going to have a patient die or something's going to happen, mm. and then, like, Detective Quinn is going to have to come in, and, like, they're going to have to solve it together? Like, that's not a doctor I want to go to. Right, because to have Detective Quinn continue to be involved, there has to be some sort of crime involved. Right. It can't just be, like house solving medical mysteries right then you don't have the crime piece exactly this is a good question i was like how could how could they do this like one of our favorite shows you and i we really enjoy the resident yeah. right i'm like how could they how could they make it like that like how you have like a doctor but you i just don't think they can not in a small town like if she was working in like a big hospital in a metropolitan city well, look, your patients are going to die, right? Like every doctor is going to yeah, have patients not, that die, not but it's not all nefarious, you know? Exactly. I, that, that these are good questions. I would be curious to see how this is going to play out. Unless what would be cool is she leaves the practice and takes over as the autopsy doctor. It's called family practice mysteries. Uh, see, it doesn't, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> Um, I did think there were some funny moments in this movie, particularly the daughter. At one point, she's like, I don't know. That's what they do on SVU. I thought it was great. And now it makes sense, too, because the writer has written for like yeah, all, all these crime shows. shows. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I enjoyed the teenagers. I thought they were portrayed pretty true to life. Okay. You don't think? The kids... Yes. Yeah, the kids. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm not not the other students in that high school. I got things to say. They were mean. There was some Regina George mean girl stuff happening in also, there. Also, she says, hey, girl, I'll turn that frown upside down. Oh, I didn't, didn't even clock that. Teenagers don't talk like that. No. We have, both of us have teenagers. They don't talk like that. Also, the mean girl teenager is not um, going to wear 
cheer his life matching sweatshirts. That was so funny, right? Like, yeah. That was so funny. No, I thought the kids, the children of Dr. Rachel Hunt, I thought they, you got the one, the boy invested in his like computer games and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the daughter was really trying to make, make her way into the, and I like their relationship together. Like she wasn't going to, she told those girls to kick rocks. Yeah. You know, because they were being mean to her brother. I liked the kids. Me too. You ready to talk wishes? Sure. Okay, I'm going to say it. This movie is boring, and here's why. Is this the butt? Oh, no, I got so many butts. Okay. <laughs> um, they tell not show. There's too much happening in exposition. There's too much detective coming to doctor being like, this is what I found out. Stop telling me stop having a conversation with her where you tell me what you found out and show me you finding it out it Mm -hmm. is hard to follow a movie where you're talking about all of these people who are not on screen at the moment telling me about all the nefarious activities in which they're involved in it's just too much talking and no action i agree lots of talking very boring. Mm-hmm. I'm going to circle back to Amanda Shul and Brendan Penny. And I very much enjoy Brendan Penny. I thought he was good. It's nice to see him in this kind of uh, role. Amanda Shul, like outside of center stage, I don't think I've ever seen her in a Hallmark movie that I was like wowed over. Mm. So I'm not like, I'm not trying to dog her by any means. But I didn't think they had a ton of chemistry together. I know this is opposite of what you said. And I know with like Hallmark Mysteries, there's always a slow burn between like Mm -hmm. our two leads. But I just thought they were very lackluster. There was just, it wasn't doing it for me. They weren't bringing it. Mm -mm. Okay, you ready for my butt? Yes. Uh, And it's about the vet storyline. Here are my thoughts. I think this is an important conversation But in addition to Rachel's situation as a vet, we also have the unhoused vet with the dog that she meets. Yes. And I think this is an important story to tell. But somehow in this movie, we're doing too much and yet too little. And I think maybe that was a story for a future installment of this series because I think we're throwing too much at the life as a vet storyline because we have Rachel struggling to adjust. We have this man struggling to adjust and finding a job. It needs to be one at a time, like introduce Rachel as the vet. She's trying to do it all. We talk about the idea that she's got some adjustments to make. She needs maybe a little help reintegrating into life. Mm -hmm. Her dad brings that up. I just felt like the story of the man in the hospital took too much away from what could have been good storytelling on the mystery piece. Sure. Again, I liked that story. I just think it's in the wrong spot. Got it. I kind of agree. I feel like they were like, well, we're only getting at one shot. So let's tell all the good vet stories and let's make this a running theme yeah. throughout. Got you. I have one more wish. Mm. You know, I don't usually have the murderer pegged in these movies because they like throw a lot at you. To me, it was very obvious who the bad guys were. <laughs> like, yeah, from the when they name. walk in at the funeral home and they're like, "That was really disturbing for our family." Yeah, red flags all like, around. That guy's scary. Yeah, I'm like, oh, he's not obvious. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I almost was like, it couldn't possibly be him because <laughs> because it's too obvious. Right? Seriously, yeah, yeah, he yeah, came yeah. in like gun in his pocket, like poking out at her. Um, I have one more wish and it is justice for Melody, who is Rachel's office assistant. Mm -hmm. Girl exists simply to meditate and ask Rachel how she's doing. She has (laughs) absolutely no story of her own. And she's just like this, like floating little meditating orb and give her more to do or get rid of her altogether. No, I don't want that. Flush it out. Make her a fully formed character. I hear you, but in this movie, is there... She needs a sidekick. She needs help. She needs... But she got her dad. Yeah. I think they could be like a fun little crime-fighting team. Just give her more to do. Okay. Are you ready for did to see that? Yes, I am. Uh, mine is just that Dr. Rachel willy-nilly gives away medical information all over town. Anybody who will listen, she talks about 
the medical history of this patient. Thing, it, no, stop it. Yeah, I like really hope my doctor is not like chatting it up with the grocery store clerk about. Girl has two teenagers at home. You do not have room in your brain to be. She just, uh, just okay. Yeah, I have two. Did you see that? This potentially women on woman crime, but oh. I thought the makeup on Amanda Scholl was atrocious. <laughs> I, there was too much bronzer, too light of concealer. I just felt like she walked around like a literally looked like she had ski goggles on and then they sprayed like bronze on her face and then removed mm. the ski goggles. I just thought it did not look great. I am sorry. I have one other. Did you see that? I can't take credit for it. On IMDb, a reviewer wrote that when they showed uh, the dead guy, Dr. Hunt's patient, uh-huh. he flinched. They oh. flinched. So, but I didn't have it in me to go back and like rewatch it, but somebody on IMDb says caught the flinch, caught the flinch. Well, speaking of crime, what did you rate this movie? Two and a half stars. I gave it two. Ooh. I, it was rough. It was not great. Hey, thank you for listening to this episode of Girls Gone Hallmark. If you love this podcast, we love your five-star ratings and reviews. You can leave them in the podcast app of your choice, and you might just hear them read on a future episode. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.